Six. This is why we have producers, because we announcers aren't to be trusted with remembering all the important facts and figures. That's what I had written down was six. So, you know. Yeah, six plays three. Yeah, because five plays four. And um, this is sense. the quarterfinal stage. Yes. Uh, where we are. So, obviously, uh, this is going to be an important matchup for both of these teams. Well, this is for a spot in the semi finals. Which is, of course, very up, or, you know, important because if you don't get in the semi-finals, you don't get in the final. So, so far in the tournament, Canada have come up against Wales, who uh, they beat Wales 199-34. Yep. They've played Russia, who they beat 291-0. to zero. Oosh. France gave them a bit of competition. Yeah, that was an interesting game. 241-155, to 155, and then... Greece, they yep. rolled over 795 yeah. to 7. What about uh, Argentina? Well, Argentina played Belgium in their opening game, beating them by 180 points to 6. The Netherlands in their second game, 233 to 10. Uh, their game against Australia, they had two really tough games here. Australia, they played, lost um, by 319 points to 32. And then their next game after that, against USA Royal Derby, they lost 361 to 49. So Argentina here coming off two losses, Canada coming off three very, very comfortable wins. In fact, those wins have given Canada overall the highest differential of all of the teams in the tournament so far they're currently on plus 1330 points it was overall mm, Argentina yeah. currently sitting about minus 202 in their differential yeah those two games against Australia and USA quite significant the uh, the game against Greece though you want to take into account a couple of uh, big names missing for Canada and they still posted nearly 800 points Miroquitz wasn't there, neither was Malihuana. So now those two brought back into the squad. Maya Mangle, you out for this one, as is Boxcar and Crazy Squirrel. Quickly going through the Canadian roster 10 17 Bigly Smalls, 1 2 3 Miracle Whips, 13 Al K Traz, 1 3 1 Alexandra Evans, number 16 Palmer, 19 Labros, 24 Shania Payne, 303 Kenichi Wow, 420 Malihuana, 604 Sarah Echholm. 658 Hughes, 66 Falcon Punch, 88 Made Insane, 95, and here's where I get in trouble, Polish, Polish, yes, Polish, and 9999 Manjmone Cool. That is your Canadian roster here for this quarter final. And for Team Argentina, we have Tamis, we have Alba, Mad Flacker, we have Hulka. Now I'll get this one right, Tropical Mechanica. Mechanica. Lulazan, Paoli, Julia Svelta, Julia Svelta, Correja, mm -hmm. Maki Lomera, mm -hmm. Rejo, Papap, Sismel, Maniha, and Chinaski. Chinaski. Chinaski, yes. Chinaski. Well, wonderful announcer who's currently working on the house here, Trancho Toro been so helpful with guides for our pronunciations and for the Spanish language announcers, Wait, Spanish language names for the us announcers. We are going to do our best to hit those on the nose as we are 40 seconds away from Derby. Um, quick thoughts about this game before we go ahead. Uh, as we saw Canada struggle a little bit with France there, uh, that was a very scrappy penalty heavy game for both teams. Argentina will have known that result and we will see if they take that into account try and you know get under the skin of the Canadians a little bit yeah I think uh, Argentina are gonna have to get in quick and kind of really push the momentum of the game against Canada who've looked strong all the way through the tournament so far and I think if they can get in quick get lead assert the dominance over the game I think it might shake the Canadians who up yep. at this point have only really had that one challenge yeah and that rattled them um, one of our co-announcers did, did say that that might be uh, a weakness that could be exploited by Argentina here so we're getting lined up first with Tropical Mechanica for Argentina playing in the blue today against Falcon Punch for Canada playing in the white Tropical Mechanica makes the first move through and is right up against the front two wall 
Yeah, Marlinge at the front there, bracing the two, but Falcon Punch sees a gap down the inside and takes lead at Jammer for Canada. 121 there. 121? Sorry, 131, Alexandra Evans, that was. So you don't have 121, 131 there. Popping off the Argentinian Jammer at corner two. Both jammers somewhat tangled up. We've mm. got Tropical currently with the star in off the helmet. Yep. Uh, just being held by that. Bigly Smalls, we've got some offense coming up. Star pass is complete now. Yes, straight through to 45. That's Maki Lamebra that's uh, got the star for Argentina. Yeah, you noticed might not seem there as as the pivot came forward for Argentina, Mange, uh, the mirror image followed, looking maybe to recapture, but was unable to get in the way of uh, as they got out Maki with the start. Four points for Canada, four nil. So next up, we're going to see Eurasia for Argentina Rejo. against. Shania Payne who put up a 50 point jam earlier against Greece which we believe is a Guinness World Record tying jam for a single point jam uh, potentially the highest score in tournament play as well Shania Payne was knocked to the outside on turn 2 forced to recycle back meanwhile Rejo took a slide through colliding with one of her own players out now, not lead has took off the cover, so we've got Canada with Leach and Iapain just takes the call from the bench to get that jam called off, shut down Argentina before they can get in and score. So two jams played, still only uh, Canada with four points, Argentina still on zero. And this is all happening on the row line track. Row line is the tailored gear to fit your needs. Yes, this is the row line track here as Marijuana takes the star up against 265, Lulazan. Marijuana, a little bit of jockeying for position there, Luluzan, not a whole lot. Fees Luluzan into the brace three of Canada. Marijuana takes the outside line. Marge there with some assisting, but not enough to get Marijuana through. Takes the inside line, trying to break apart that brace three, which does crumble. Marijuana takes lead jammer for Canada. Three on the bounce for the Canadian lead jammers. Helmet cover is off now for Luluzan. So it looks like we're going to get a star pass attempted here the, the, the attempt of a star pass you have to have the pivot nearby as you see the pivot it always makes me a bit confused why jammers take off their helmet covers when the pivot is nowhere near them it just it, it shows your intention yes but it doesn't do anything to distract your opponents with against I guess a team maybe that isn't as aware mm. it might make that those blockers look for where the pivot is all of a sudden true but, but not at this level they're going to focus level. on the jammer now we saw that with the Canada Greece game they never lost that target one two three miracle whips for Canada one nine five three man flaca for Argentina miracle whips are just evading some blocks takes a tumble through turn two, straight up into the waiting bodies. Fast and frantic at the niece getting right up in Miracle Whip's grill, as the kids would say, but it is a power jam. Forms. Four yep. Forearms penalty gonna say mad flacker. Go take our take a seat in the box. First power jam of the game in going to Canada now. Lots of passive offense here. Just now being asked for some help mm. and as as Argentina went to readjust Miracle was able to get out although not as easily as she may have liked Argentina making it difficult work there Canada letting Miracle go alone as they do see the Mad Flacker has been released Pivot number 303, Kenichi Wao bridging there a little bit. Kenichi Wao just was sent up on a fence, mm. but obviously I then had to maintain that bridge position yeah. just to keep a pack. Mm. 
It's a very, very quick change that's very important because if she had continued on to go on the offense, it would have been a destruction call and an unnecessary penalty picked up by Canada. Or even just this, just a newer pack, and that's going to obviously mm. ha force the Canadians at the back to have to move forward yeah. and obviously drop the attention from the jammer that they're on. So we're back in with Falcon Punch for Canada. And Tropical Machinana. Machina? Mechanica. Mechanica. Falcon Punch is just being held up, rolling round a four wall at the front. Monge. Got some help from Monge. Yep. He's now dropping back into defense. We've got a forearm call going to be coming in at the top of the track. And a no pack. Yeah, it's a forearms call for the Argentinian blocker number eight. Pop pop. Tropical Makina. Gonna Go. be joined in the box by Monge, so it's three on three oh, yeah. in the track. And we've instantly got an out of play block is being signaled. That one I think is gonna go to 99. Chinaski. Chinaski. Quick bit of conversation going on in the middle there between the Canadian bench and the officials. Big shout out to Roller Derby Elite. Roller Derby Elite, the brand that invented the sport. So it's number seven rail. Up against number 88, Maiden Sane. Maiden Sane with only two to beat, just the pivot at the front. Finds the gap on the inside, goes for Lee Jammer Canada. Cover is off. There's the, the pivot's at the front. Rejo decides to keep the star. Stash through the pack. Now out and racing. As we've got Maiden Sane just from the middle of the pack. Sees Regio coming hard round the corner, calls off the jam, picks up three for Canada. Yeah, two blocker deal in the bin there for Canada, one to Argentina, three on two advantage in favour of Argentina here. So although Argentina haven't got any points on the board yet, I think even after seven and a half minutes of play, holding Canada at 24 points is going to be worrying Canada slightly because one big power jam oh yeah. is all it's going to take to push this back in favour of Argentina. We saw this early on this very track, Scotland getting a big power jam getting right back in the lead against Wales, but not allowing that to happen is number 24, Shania Payne, who has lead jammer for Canada. The Argentinian jammer number 265, Lulu Zando straight out and chasing down fast enough to limit Canada to scoring three. It looks like we've got three going up. It is three. Yeah. Matt Flacker up against 4-2-0 Manjuana. So Argentina with a three on two. Pack advantage. Pack just rolling back to the jam line here. Ready to pick those jammers up right on the whistle. This was something the Canadians did really well against the Greeks, uh, not giving them any space whatsoever for the jammers to move. Looks like it's a tactic that is, is widely being used here by the Canadians, but might not be enough here. Do you have the Argentine jammer in the front as Manawanas gets to slip through? Lead does go to Canada. Close there for Argentina and Mad Flacca. Eight jams in now, Canada with eight leads. Very, very fast pack. Meluana able to get through. Call of the jam, picks up another three. Mm. The Argentines are definitely pressuring the Canadians here. Not allowing them to get comfortable scoring passes uh, in these last couple of jams. Falcon punch against Tropical Machina. As we still have one Argentinian blocker sat in the cheese ball penalty box. No pack is called. So we're going to see some reforming, but not enough to let the jammers get through. And but we get it. Four on penalty. Jam. Yep. 
Falcon Punch picks up the forearms penalty so now power jam Argentina they have taken off the star though so it's going to go two minutes this jam no lead is now available as we get forearms and being picked up by Alexandra Evans for Canada and a penalty being picked up as well by Tropical Machina Mechanica and that means we've got that German switcheroo and this is definitely available for two minutes now it's a slightly squandered chance by Argentina on that power jam yeah best chance they've had first first jam and penalties both occurring in this jam for one for each team dishonours even shall we say Croatia picks up a low block penalty goes to the cheese ball penalty box so we've got two distinct groups of skaters here two Three. brace threes with a jammer at the back of them here comes the offence though we knew it was coming big hit there from Alexandra Evans just came from the box lined that offence up and went straight but looks like we get a is that a cut the track being the sick? forearms actually that's a forearms being signaled now that one on a Canadian block there the cheese ball penalty box seeing a lot of business here from the Canadians here in Jam 9. And we do have the first point on the board for Argentina and another scoring pass about to occur as Falcon Punch is stopped there by number 99 Ch uh, Chinaski. So definitely a lot of back and forth to that cheese ball bearings penalty box. Yeah, Alexander Evans picking up two in quick successions that area of what I would call worth it penalties but neither one doing quite enough to help her but team Argen make score. Argentina are now, are now on the scoreboard. Four points picked up in the jam. And nine, holding. Nine. nine points picked up in the jam. And holding Canada to a zero. So this is what I'm saying. Argentina just need to keep up this pressure. Mm. And I think we might see Canada, who haven't had to really face this, they might get worried and they might start making this small This is what mistakes. happened with France. France rattled them and the penalty box to a lot of Canadian business. So we're going to see Miracle Whips going up against Regio. Miracle Whips takes the outside line, picks up a quick lead for Quick star Canada. pass, very quick star pass to Tamise. So Tamise now about half a lap behind Miracle Whips. Miracle Whips gets bumped to the outside, calls off the jam, up the line. Yeah, you notice the Canadian blockers there surrounded the rearmost Argentinian blocker, capturing with inside the cube wall, meaning they were definitely going to get that point without being able to impact Miracle's play. Smart play by the experienced Canadians. So just four picked up by Canada. So again, Canada being held as short pickups. They're not being allowed to get in and get get really scoring like we've seen them in previous games in this tournament. Yeah, this may be a, a little bit of a case here that the, the previous games for Canada were very comfortable apart from the France game. Maiden Sane now making the way for Canada up the front, getting some offensive support from Monge. No pack is called to Luluzan. Getting popped to the inside there by, again, Alexandra Evans. Being on a real tear already this 14 minutes and change of the first half. Maiden Sane being swarmed at the front. Got Monge up there helping out, but those Argentinian blockers now seem determined to stop Maiden Sane from making any progress up this track. Yeah, good, strong, physical blocking. A good screening out of Monge here on the outside edge of the straightaway. The Argentinian blocker bracing off her own brace three to keep Monge out of the offensive position. Lovely, lovely work by number 35, Korea. And Marge not even being able to be effective, gets in again on the brace three, but rotating and walk pulling and recovering are the Argentinians. Still holding Maiden Sane in play as uh, Alexandra Evans picks up another penalty, a forearms penalty. That is at least three for the Canadian blocker, and we are 15 minutes into this half. So in the last 45 seconds, I think the Argentinians have only allowed Maiden Saint to move forward about 25 feet on the track. If that. And that's with some offensive support from Monge, who's now gone back into the defensive role with Alexandra Evans losing that spot in that back wall. Now we get lead going but to Lulu Zan. But we only have 23 seconds left on the clock, and that is the first lead for Argentina. And now we've got Maiden Saint attempting a star pass to Monge, who's been key in this jam so far. But yeah. Monge now trying to recycle Lulu Zan, which means Maiden Saint's lost the pivot. 
Now we might get the star pass. We've only got five seconds left in the jam. Here comes Alexandra Evans. Here comes the big offense. Boom. Straight on the outside shoulder. Number 45, Mahila Vera. Argentina picking up all four points, though, to a nil for Canada. We'll give a shout out to S1 Helmets, the official helmet of the 2018 Roller Derby World Cup. The S1 Life Advisor Helmet, next level protection. S1, the official helmet of the 2018 Roller Derby World Cup. Mad Flacker is going to be up against number 24, Shania Payne. So that last jam, that was the first time Canada have been held to no pass from their jammer. So as we see, Argentina now able to just lock in their defence a bit more, and I think it's going to start to rattle Canada. Yeah, there is a, there is a, a fear uh, amongst some of my friends who are Canadian that potentially the Canadian team may be rattleable, to put it in a very broken English way. So, so Shania Payne is now through, picks up lead, makes the first pass through the pack. And five points picked up by Canada. And they need this. They need to settle into this game. We had a star stash by Mad Flacker through the pack. Now putting the cover back to the helmet to resume before the scoring pass starts. Shania Payne now in the jam. Just shrugs off. Sees mail. But yep. picks up. Looks like it's a forearms penalty. In that move on Sees mail. This was one thing we saw again in the Greece game, a lot of using the arm to crowbar around. Uh, it does get a lot of forearms penalties from the jammers, they're trying to fight position. Cut track penalty issue to number 13, Alka Traz. And Argentina, oh! Oh, wonderful, wonderful offensive blocking by Paoli, or Paoli there. Came in, popped off the Canadian blocker, got a jammer out for five points. Shania Payne now a release at the end of that penalty, a direction of game pay penalty given to 198 or Hulka. And multiplayer block. That yes. is going to Manija. 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 Two quick penalties for Argentina gonna hurt them in this jam. But it looks like it's gonna be eight players five. So Argentina, sorry, ten players five. Yeah. Nope, 10 players 8, just waiting Ooh. for that scoreboard to update. So 44 to Team Canada against Argentina's 21 points. Canada currently outscoring Argentina by a bit more than 2 to 1. As Maliwana takes the outside line with a 180 spin on her left skate, takes lead jammer. Tropical Mechanica is in the back, has the cover removed. Again, no pivot on track, so there's nothing to really pretend we're going to be doing here. So it might be a habitual thing, which is a great habit to get into, or maybe they're prepping up for when the jammer is released, like now. Maniha, the pivot is out the box, reaching back for the star pass. Yeah, over the top, around the side to the, you know, get out the front there. But the Canadians wise to it, bullying. Bullying the German Tropical me Mechanica back. Um, Marijuana pops on the outside edge. No pass, no penalty going to be a issue issued out, so there's no cut. There it is. And no point. Polish picked up a clockwise block in that engagement, trying to stop the star pass. Yeah, and one of those worth it penalties we love so much. And now Tropical Mechanica is out of the pack and able to get away. But we're going to see Marijuana just call off the jam. A 14 point pickup. Sorry, no, an 18 point pickup by Canada. 62 plays 21 now. 10 minutes and 26 remaining in the period. Marge there just coming out having a pick with one of our OPRs, uh, Zinni Soldat, indicating there's some shirt pulling going on. Uh, that's obviously be fed into the IPRs of the head referee, and that'll be to the other there. Obviously, see very little impact on that without an official review. So on the five second skate gear start line, we've got Regio for Argentina against Falcon Punch. Falcon Punch put off the inside there by 1-3-A Alba. 
this time Parker takes the outside edge, gets a bit more space, Lee Jammer going to Canada. Star pass has taken place. That's now to Temis for Argentina. 0-3 now racing half a lap behind the pack. I think we want to see a quick call off here from Falcon Punch. Yeah, credit where credit's due though. Number 95, Polish, doing all the work to leave with the two remaining Argentinian blockers off at the inside edge. They could not be remotely effective at stopping the Canadian jammer. There was a great move though by Reggio at the start of the jam. Realised, hadn't even made it across the jam line. Mm -hmm. Realised, wasn't going anywhere and just passed that star and enabled, enabled Tamis to get away. But now we're going to go to a team timeout from Argentina. Yeah, well, Wise want to pull in here. They're uh, 20 minutes into the half. Argentina almost tried to get a little bit of a lockdown on Canada, but now lost it. Let me we'll have a quick chit chat, catch up, work out what's working, what isn't, and hopefully try and refine that ability to lock down the Canadian jammers. Whilst they're continuing to have this team timeout. Got to give a big shout out to S1 Helmets. Roller Derby Diaries is the S1 Helmet Company's original web series that tells a real roller derby story. Check out youtube.com forward slash S1 Roller Derby for new and past episodes. They are the official helmet of the 2018 Roller Derby World Cup. And a big crowd of both Argentinian and Canadian fans here. And looking around, I see a healthy contingent of a bunch of other nations here coming to cheer us good game. I can see some Windies in the crowd, some Scots, some Welsh. Oh, everyone's here to watch good derby. And considering the range of games on offer right at this moment in the quarter-final stages, this one is one to watch, and I think Oof. the crowd here know that. Uh, there's, a, there's a big crowd, obviously, for USA Roller Derby versus, I want to say, Finland. Finland. Yes. But you need to stay here on the roll line track with us oh Team yes. Canada versus Team Argentina back underway now Miracle Whips against Lula Zan Lula Zan stuck behind a brace three of Canada finds a little bit of an opening has got lead but a great little hip check from Papap throws Miracle Whips back in forces the draw back and Miracle Whips has got lead but is now right Argentinian three wall and she's stuck in a very deep brace three hopping around on her toes trying to find some space looks like it's a double penalty for Argentina's blocker there in the bin direction of gameplay penalty there for one zero one seven bigly smalls jam called by miracle whips double donuts might have been a miscommunication there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think Miracle Whips knew that she was on the initial pass and wasn't scoring yet. But the bench kind of signaled the call off, and so as soon as the call off went up, she was kind of trying to explain that like, I'm not scoring any points here. Right, I see. I see. It makes sense. Makes sense. Cannot disagree with that logic. So so far, Canada have been dominating Argentina in picking up lead, mm. 13 to one. But that's not reflected on the scores because the defense of Argentina is making Canada work for every point. And um, we've got right now Maiden Sin being testing that defensive work of Argentina as Mad Flacker picks up a blocking out of bounds penalty. Must have had a foot out of bounds while still engaging that brace three and continued to actively engage with a foot out of bounds. So another power jam opportunity for Canada. But they need to take advantage of this. I mean, it's, they've only got three blockers to beat, and that's, that's one scoring pass. But now they're going to have a full four of Argentina's blockers out. And if they can lock down uh, Maiden Sane here, they may really struggle. But Canada not allowing that to happen. Big offense coming from the inside with Bigley at the lead of that offense. Canada there very wise to drill Argentina into moving and getting at a pace and the time frame we've seen Argentina locking down the Canadian jammers is when they've been able to control the pace of the yep. pack and keep it almost stopped. Without the threat of the Argentinian jammer though that freed up all the Canadian blockers to go on that offense and they went in with a lovely wave from inside to out coming in one two three four able to peel open Argentina allowing the Canadian jammer made insane to get through on that scoring pass. 
And we're going to see Tropical Mechanica against Shania Payne. Tropical Mechanica picks up lead for Argentina straight out of the gate. Yeah. A maiden saying locked in. And here comes the offense from Marge. And the, the Argentina is just opening up that gap. Letting Marge go straight through. As Maiden Saint takes the tumble at corner one and two, no pack is called, pack is reformed by Monge. We're going to see a failure to reform or a failure to return penalty issued at the back of the pack as they just held on to Tropical Mechanica way longer than they ought to have done. Yeah, Alexandra Evans again picking up another penalty. She, I believe she's on at least four, potentially five. A four hours penalty for Tropical Me Me Mechanica. Ooh, that is unfortunate there for Argentina. So Shania Payne now, the only jammer on track. This is going to go the, the rest of the two minutes allotted as we get a forearms penalty now being issued. To the pivot number 45, Maki Lombera. So now, oh, well, there was only for a moment there a single blocker for Argentina. Join now to exit the cheese ball bearings penalty box. Yeah. Shania Payne just being given free reign over this track to rack up 10 points so far. Alexander Evans on the run back there, trying to pull back Tropical on Mechanica. Tropical Mechanica takes the inside line and gets a forearms penalty. Yeah, that's unfortunate there for Argentina. Only just got off the power jam. This is going to allow uh, Shania Payne to just keep racking up punch. Shania Payne picking up a big jam against Greece. Going to pick up another big jam here against Argentina. Argentina just having a bad run of penalty trouble right now which is not helping when you've got someone like Shania Payne on track who doesn't really need too much blocker offense to get through anyway but when there's no blocker defense trying to hinder Shania Payne going for the apex jump and so far all of this game's jammer penalties have been forearms five jammer penalties in total yeah, all I, on forearms I believe it's the crowbarring their way through they're trying to edge around the hips with their arms out and using their arms to balance and that arm engagement on the forearm they're levering their opponents out of the way and that is getting them the forearm penalty they're using it actively and gaining the advantage and that is an impact penalty assessment as you well know being a referee and that's what's getting them called now we've got Meliwana against Rejo Meliwana just pushing the three at the front forward as fast as possible we're getting out of players call at the back big offense coming from the bin but can't do enough Lee Jammer has been awarded to Meliwana, but she has been knocked off the outside and recycled slightly back, but gets through again. It was a good move from Timis to basically push Meliwana off the outside, but not able to get the draw back. And kind of Timis, we've had a star pass now. Yeah, taking a few of these and been very effective with them quickly. Three minutes left on the clock, 25 to Argentina, 99 to Canada. And we'll just give a quick shout out to Blood and Thunder, whose belief is life is better on roller skates. Visit them at bloodandthundermag.com for roller derby inspired apparel. Uh, and if you're coming over tomorrow for our final day here, they do have a stall here as well, with all their wonderful merch on display and f available for purchase. It is number 66, that is Falcon Punch at the back, dancing around, trying to find some space for Canada. 265, Lulu Zan in the same predicament. Scrum pack at the pivot line, though. Everyone is mixing in. Brace threes, loose blockers knocking around, each one trying to find a gap. Falcon Punch popped up to the inside. And Falcon Punch takes lead jammer. Falcon Punch now in the scoring pass. We've Luluzan. got Luluzan with a start. Oh, beautiful work there. Luluzan hopping to the inside, avoiding the final hip check and gets out. Falcon Punch is bumped to the outside, calls off the jam. So once again, Canada able to shut out Argentina now, extending the lead 107 to 25. Yeah, Canada now into triple digits. 
currently on scoring yards and teams by a ratio of a little more than four to one. But again, we could see there when Argentina could hold that pack speed slow, they were able to swarm the jammers. But let's have a look now as we get Miracle Whips going up against. I think this is a new jammer. No, it's Whips. Oh, it's, it's Mad Flacker. Sorry, Mad it is Flacker. Mad Flacker. Yeah. Mad Flacker already has the cover off in. Looking for Tamis. Cut track though from Mad Flacker. That was a great drawback by Al K. Traz. Managed to get that cut on yeah. Mad Flacker. So now Canadian power jam. Yeah, something the Canadians are definitely well drilled at. Saw that a lot against Greece. Using that experience to uh, really upset the jammers there, calling little, dra dragging little cuts on those. We're going to get a multiplayer block called at the front of the pack. Hulka, I believe. That is on yet. Yeah, Hulka picks up the multiplayer block. And Canada are probably just going to run this jam now. There's only 20 seconds left of the period. Alcatraz picked up a uh, direction of gameplay penalty at corner two as well. Mad Flacker is out of the penalty box now, but is still on the initial pass. Star is still stashed in the hand. And passed over the top two to Nice. To Nice taking a hell of a lot of these star passes in this first half. Jared was, was just asking for that pack to speed up knew that there was no time left on the period clock and able to call up the jam I'd imagine that's, I'm waiting for the score to be updated but I think there's a 14 point jam for Miracle yeah. Whips so after that little bit of rattle about 10 minutes into the half Canada really locked down I think they gained more from the Argentinian timeout than the Argentinians did so yeah that is 121 25 Canada now nearly up to five times the score of Argentina. These teams did meet at Dallas. Uh, was it 2014? 20 2014 in yep. Dallas. It was a 30 minute game and Canada did take the win 290 to 50. To 50. So almost a 6 to 1 ratio which is nearly where we're at there now. Yeah. Maybe a 5 to 1 ratio at the moment there. But more importantly about half the score for both teams compared to that in the 30 point game. game. So we will be back with you in approximately 13 minutes for the second half of this game. Uh, and we'll hopefully have more wonderful action for you then. So stick around for the remainder of Team Canada versus Team Argentina. We've got some high scoring jammers. So we've got um, Shania Payne picked with 20, 37 points. We've got uh, Meliwana Mel with 26 and points. And Miracle Whips is also on 26 points. And then you've got uh, 66 Falcon Punch. Picking Canada picking up another was it 16? Dominated the lead 17 to 2. Whoosh. And Argentina, so looking at the penalties, Mad Flacker, one of those jammers, jammers that we saw is on three penalties. Tropical Mechanica on is three. on three penalties. In more danger for Argentina, we've got Hulka, one of the blockers is on five. Yep. Two more pop up and Chiniska, uh, sorry, Chinaski. Yep. On four. Only Alexandra Evans for Canada currently on four penalties as we're back to the action now. Miracle Whips and the aforementioned Tropical Mechanica now on track. Tropical Mechanica going for the star pass. Knocked One. out of range. Yeah, the wonderful work there by Polish to drop out and stop the star pass there by backing Tropical Me Mechanica out of reach of her pivot. Nice move there to re uh, recycle Miracle Whips down the penalty box straight. Tropical Mechanic is still with the star off the helmet right now, trying to find a way through. Looks like we're going to get a star pass to Maki Lumbera. Yeah, the pivot has come in. I'm not sure it's going to be a pass or a stash. So we've got the star pass to Maki Lumbera. Now out and racing to catch his pack. Miracle Whips so is able to get through, pick the points and call off the jam. We'll give a shout out to Kaya Skates, Quad Roller Skates, Plates and Accessories for Roller Derby and Lifestyle Park Skating and Dance. It's time. Chaya, oh, sorry, Kaya-brand.com. Check them out. Kaya, of course, if you're looking for the web address spelled C-H-A-Y-A-brand.com. Yeah. One of those, I think, I think a lot of us did mispronounce that name quite a while with a soft C sound rather than the hard K sound. One of them, we are 
Oh, he's going to have to double check on. So Reju now trying hard to get through against Meliwana, who's right at the front, gets a great offensive block from Palmer from Canada, just to open it up. Meliwana, they're being rolled to the outside, got four Argentinians currently swarming. Just got one, the beaten picks up the lead for Canada. Now Reju sees lead go, takes off the cover, looking for the star pass. However, Timis, uh, sorry, Timis, has been knocked to the outside now behind Reggio. In fact, it looks like we've got a star pass. It is completed, yes. To Tamis. Yeah, that's you. You can tell Canada straight away shifted focus entirely. Everyone on the straights to Mies. Um, that's locked her right down at the back. Power jam to Argentina. You get a back block called on Meli Juana. But Tamis there needs some assistance, and here it comes. Peeling off is that Hughes? I think that is Hughes. It is Hughes. 658 Hughes was peeled off by an Argentinian blocker. Bit of a, a pile up at corner one. Miss now with the star on her helmet. Going to be on a scoring pass here as we do have Melhuana standing in the box. Everyone's taking a tumble there at corner one. Tamis on a scoring pass, still got Palmer and Traz to beat uh, Alcatraz at the front, bracing Palmer now joined by Hughes and Melhuana captured briefly by number 27 Paoli who picks up a penalty for blocking out of play. Tamis still on this scoring pass, I believe did pick up points Yes, all five points picked up. So Tammy's able there to capitalise on that uh, star pass slightly. Obviously, power jam there again for Argentina, which they didn't really take the full advantage of. But the score is now standing 100 point the difference. Team Canada 130, Team Argentina on 30. Mm. Period two of this game. Still 26 minutes left to play, though. Yeah, I mean... Uh Argentina are going to struggle here because they need to be able to offense onto the Canadian wall. Their jammers cannot do it solo, but they're so heavily engaged by the Canadian jammers, they can't offer much assistance, especially as they are constantly in the penalty box. But as I say all this, Argentina get lead jammer. But here comes Shania Payne, quick pop to the outside. And here comes the clock management that I love to see here. The Argentinian bench, the man, they run it and speed it up until the box clears. He called it for the call off, but only one of the blockers had been released. The final remaining blockers indicating they have one second to serve. But if you if you left at that one second, Shania Payne would have been into the pack and scoring. But it was a lovely little move from Shania Payne that set that up, timed perfectly on the speed corner, mm -hmm. hip checked to the outside, yep. took the inside line and just got 15 feet, which was enough just to shake that lead. Changes the entire angle of the approach to the outside, slows them right down, and takes all that momentum instead of being forward into a lateral motion. So Mad Flacker picks up a forearms. A forearms? Again, it's that crowbarring open every time. And here it is, it's going to be another big scoring jam here from the Canadians, as Made Insane does have lead jammer. Huluka getting involved there with Sismael, trying to slow down Maine. Same big offense coming from, once again, number 16, Palmer. Maine saying coming in on another scoring pass. Palmer lurking with intent here for the offense, and goes for it, but just, you know, Maine saying not in really needing. Mad Flacker at the back of a brace three. Canada struggling to bake their way through. Again, Palmer offensing at the front, peeling off the brace at the front of the tripod. Rotating around those number 88. And Timis, Timis putting in a great job here for Argentina, uh, both blocking and jamming. And she does take the star pass. Timis has been a standout player for Argentina so far. Oh, yeah. Blocking when needed, taking those star passes when needed. Yep. 
doing a fantastic job of just hurrying the um, the Canadian, Canadian Germans whatever yep. they can. And Will not let them rest. Managing to do all this. So far, no penalties have gone the way of Timmy's. I don't want to jinx it. I'm, I you apologize. Definitely have. Yep. I apologize now in advance for any penalties you may have picked up. <laughs> well, she's not on track at the moment. She definitely haven't cursed her for this jam. That is uh, Miracle Whips, one, two, three. And it's Tropical Mechanica currently at the front. Got one to be at the front. And it is Monge, though. Monge, very, very adept at solo blocking. But a cut track issue to Miracle Whips, which means Lee Jammer is open. It's Monge with Alexandra Evans. Lee Jammer's awarded, but the Canadians are continuing to block. At the front, out of play, Packers at the rear. One penalty assessed, that is to 1017. Bigly Smalls and Lee Jammer has gone obviously to Argentina earlier. Now they're on a scoring pass, two to beat. It is Monge and Alexandra Evans who can't do enough. Oh, Candido. Uh, high block? Assessed there? Yeah, it looks like a high block was assessed in that contact with Alexandra Evans. Maybe a, one of those where you hit with the body and then the head follows in. Now, it didn't look from where it was leading with the head, so it must have been that impact that comes in but when the body engages first. Now we've got Miracle Whips back on track and scoring. Yeah, this is the real difference. When the Canadians have the power jam, they score freely. The Argentines struggle much more to rack up those points as the Canadian blocking is so effective at locking the Argentinian jammers down. The question is, how many points did Tropical Mechanica have before it got sent to the box? Uh, well, there was two in front, so I'd assume three. Uh, the two were uh, Evans and Marge at the front. There was one blocker on track, one in the box yeah. at the time. There was two in the front, was the two she engaged with Marge and Evans. Marge is still in the front, so Evans has given up her point to Mechanica. So uh, Monge's point might still be safe here, but not there it isn't, that should be five. It is. And that jam comes to a natural conclusion. Yep. Yeah, the, the Canadian blocking here is definitely the difference maker, I feel. They've been so adept at locking down the Argentinian jammers. I remember if you're sitting watching at home you're thinking this looks great I want to kind of put my stamp on it remember to use social media hit us up on Twitter at Derby World Cup yeah. or at Rainy City Duke Roller Derby Instagram at Roller Derby World Cup at Rainy City Roller Derby use the hashtag RDWC2018 and feel free to send us lots of photos of your viewing parties at home from around the world I personally would love it if you have a pet, preferably a cat or dog watching with you. That always makes my day. So we're getting some penalties coming here. It looks like we've just lost a multiplayer block issued to Blue Alba. 88 Sismael. And we've got Alba also on a multiplayer Oof. block. Yeah. Things not going well for Argentina here. And Canada really adept at putting the pressure on. And that's a power jam as well. The Pack head referee right just outside indicating the penalty to the jammer. Lulu Zan now sat serving 30 seconds in the cheese balls penalty box. Smith tries for the hip check but can't get enough. Racing off with the Hulter at the front. So Alba only just returned to the track, picks up a second penalty, a forearms penalty, and goes for another sit down in the cheese ball penalty box. Alba had been so far clean penalty wise up until this jam, now picks up two Not in anymore. the space of a minute yep. and a half. I think the, uh, as we were concerned, the Canadians might get rattled by the Argentines. It's actually the Argentines being rattled here by the Canadians, because they are getting scrappier and scrappier. Lulu Zan is looking for the star pass, but... Timis is being pressured out by Alcatraz. And Alcatraz drawing a great cut track on Timis. How did Meliwana hold the feet there to see the spin round pivoting on the toe stops? Held the line. 
So no points and no pass there yep. for Argentina. 19 points go up on the board. The Team Canada 182 to 35. So Rayo here with the star for Argentina. It's number 24, Shania Payne. As we have a just shy of a 150 point differential in favor of the Canadians. Bit of a pile up there at the jam line. Shania Payne falling over Alexandra Evans. Yeah, who was taken out by Maki Lombera. And Maki Lombera, the one serving the time in the bin. Shania Payne takes up lead jammer. Shania Payne now comes up on the first scoring pass of the jam. And, and, and as we often see Marge at the front disrupting the Argentinian wall. Excellent, this is uh, why I love to see pivots used as loose blockers who go on the offense to assist their jammers. Keeps them close to each other should a star pass be needed. It's, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's the most effective use of the pivot and position to put them in. Rejo, again, faith the star pass to Tamis and able to get through, sprinting now to catch the back of the pack. As we see Shania Payne knocked off just in front of us here on turn three. Calls off the jam before Reggio can manage to get in and score. Only a three point pickup for Canada in that pass. Eight points overall, 190 plays 35, still 16. Just under 17 minutes left to play in the game. Yeah, Canada really putting the screws to Argentina. Uh, definitely far more aggressive here as they work through the scoring passes it is number 88 that is made insane with the star for sorry with the maple leaf for Canada let's let's get that correct it is a maple leaf on the helmet cover for Canada and it is a I think it was an eight pointed star for it Argentina. looks like the sun from the Argentinian flag and of the course action. beautiful Argentina. sun and it warms the planet. Obviously not here in Manchester where it is a frozen tundra. Maniha just being held at the front trying to work through. Has the advantage at the moment but... Positionally but unable to get any assistance as all the Argentinian blockers are being engaged either by the pivot or the jammer at the rear of the pack. Maniha there tries some backward speed. She does get out front though with only one two speed. Palmer in there. Offense coming in from number eight. Pop, pop, but it's a power jam. Completely missing the power jam. Called one two hit. And no cut there. Number 95. Maniha gets through clean for lead jammer Argentina. And it was a blocking with the head from Maiden Sage, which causes power jam. Argentina needs to take advantage as Maniha does get out, but one foot was definitely up track. And it's a forearms penalty again. I'd, I'd love to know how many jammer penalties here are forearms because there is, it feels like it is, I'm going to say 90% of them. I think there's been one cut track, one blocking with the head, one blocking to the head. I think everything else is forearms. Has been Oosh. forearms. Oh, there was a, a block, an yeah, outbound block as well. Oh, of Sorry. course, yeah. That was the two feet out. Yeah, I remember that one straight away. It's a maiden scene now. Back on track. Managed the wrong foot. Miniha is standing, but this jam will come to a natural conclusion. Oh, just after their release. Maniha did have some points on the board, though. Four yeah. points going up for Argentina. To a 8 for Team Canada. Canada just about now to hit the double century. Yeah, that is a 160, or sorry, 159 point differential. I do apologize. So, how about you become part of the Pivot Star family? Proudly sponsoring Team Wales. Sublimated uniforms in two styles to suit everyone. That's Pivot Star. And we're back right now. Miracle Whips against Tropical Mechanica. Tropical Mechanica up on turn one now. Miracle Whips being held around the jam line. And again, this is what we said earlier. If Argentina can hold the slow pace, they can swarm the jammer. But they, the problem is, is to do this, they need all four blockers. So their jammer has to do it all by themselves, which is done here by Tropical Mechanica. 
two lead in a row for Argentina. This now makes it four to five in and the league out in this period. And very significantly, Monge has been sent to the bin. Monge has been very effective at doing those last minute recaptures, which did not happen there as a na almost a natural grand slam here. The first for Argentina, I believe, but I will be corrected if I am wrong, no doubt. Miracle star stash, toe out of bounds, gonna have to recycle herself. Bronco Mechanica gets a back block penalty though. So that's the death of that power jam, unfortunately, for Argentina. And Miracle Whips here with a minute still to get scoring. Miracle Whips star in the hand. That was Miracle Whips' initial pass. First uh, initial pass after just over a minute. Very good defense by Argentina. But Miracle Whips hyping up the crowd and her team. Gets a swarm offense coming in. But no dice. Marge released and in the mix already. Miracle Whips is great at telling the blockers exactly what she wants if she comes at the packs. So yep. see her clapping, and which, uh, which basically every time she does that means give me some offense, move this pack forward. Yep. Both Germans picking up the five there on that pass. Nine seconds left on the clock. Can the Canadians working this out realize sprint off to the front. Tropical Mechanica on a scoring pass. Miracle Whips comes in, bumps two sets of hips. Picks up two. One plus a blocker in the box. So Team Canada moved to 205, but Team Argentina pick up nine points in the jab. 48 points. Their total score now as we go to an official timeout. Yeah, Righteous Oxide's calling that after a conversation there with the alternate for Team Argentina. Let's uh, quickly run through this world class referee career. Here. Righteous Oxide, Bully Hayes, Dude Law, Feminist Killjoy, Julius Seizure, Killerbine, Lucas. Senorita Bionica, that is. And Zimini Soldat. Uh, said top quality officials. And let's also talk about the rest because we have some wonderful ones. Ragnar, uh, we have Laws, we have Gemma Track, we have Beth K. Scenario, we have Isi Satu, Emily of the State. Stevie Chris, Sticks and Stoner, Insane, The Goon, Half Blood Princess, Merry Death with Chaos, and oh, I'm going to get crucified for this pronunciation. The Prolende Pobu? That's what it looks like to me. And of course, don't forget Ragnar and Coffee. Ragnar and Coffee. I'm sure I said Ragnar. Did you say Ragnar? No, I, no. okay. I must you have missed Coffee. Miss that I don't know. That's my mistake. I do apologize, Coffee, when you are watching this back at home. Because obviously, you can't be watching it now. You're working hard. And we'll throw some love to cheese balls, precision skate bearings, cheddar, gouda, Swiss, so Swiss, Swiss, Swiss or pepper jack. Get your cheese on with cheese balls available at the quad skate shop and online, I believe. Yes, indeed. And of course, if you're here tomorrow, again, as I yep. said before, if you're coming down to catch final day action here in Event City in Manchester, if you've been working today or something or busy today, we understand, we respect that. Wife has to come first, but if you can make it down tomorrow, there is a whole, as I've said before, it's not a merch village, it is a merch city here of wonderful vendors and sponsors. A whole range of wonderful, wonderful toys for you to play with. So we've got 11 minutes 50 ish. 11.49 if you want to be exact and precise. Frozen on the clock at the moment. Team and Canada currently outscoring Argentina by a ratio of about well, just over 4 to 1, which is significantly less than their meeting in 2014. But in 20, well, sorry, in 50 minutes getting less points scored than they did in 30 four years ago. And we've got Meli Juana for Canada against Lula Zan. For Argentina, very, very tight scrum of blockers stopping both jammers from getting through. It looks like they're all going for exactly the same spot on track. Getting this lovely little scrum, and here comes the wonderful offense of Marge getting right in the mix, just opening up that brace pack. And that's that little bit was all that was needed, and now we get moving straight away. Marge here is so important for the offense of Canada. We had Palmer moving up. In fact, Palmer is coming up on the offense to try and help Meli Juana. Oh, beautiful hip check by Maki Lombera. Takes down Meli Juana on the inside line. Brace three just holding back Luluzan at corner three. 
Hughes bracing Palmer Amange. So neither Jammer out of the pack yet. There it is. Number 13, Alcatraz bridging out that brace three as Luluzan keeps attacking that gap. Marge tries to push, but oh, wonderful work as Luluzan rounds, rolls around the hips of Palmer, saying inbounds, upright, lead jammer, Argentina. Legal procedure and a look of confusion for number 27, Paoli. Three lead in a row now for Argentina. Oh, there's only 20 seconds left on the clock, but they are now scoring, whereas we've got Meliwana just coming up to get his scoring pass now. And here comes the offense from Marge from inside to out, getting in the middle of that brace, deep, breaking apart the tripod. As Maluana is knocked off the outside and run back by Pop Pop. Four points to two in favor of Argentina. Argentina now scoring more points than they did in their game in 2014, up uh, at 51 points. Now we've got Regio is going to be lining up against Shania Payne. One Argentinian blocker sitting. That is Paoli. Number 27 still sat in the box, just standing now. Regio finds the express lane Ooh. on the inside. Four in a row for Argentina. Four. Lead jammer. But what's important here is Canada is not allowed to score freely. Out so of play called on Timis. Yeah, unfortunate there. I was trying, uh, was doing the thing I'm trying to yield hands in the air while still being engaged by Shania Payne. I think we might be seeing Hulka Fowler out of the game here. Currently sitting in the box for Argentina. Being instructed to stand and asked yet to leave the penalty box area so Hulka important as we're being able to physically contest with the Canadian power blockers big loss for Argentina I believe the penalty was fully served though for Hulka so I don't think anyone will have to be asked to replace her in the, the cheese balls penalty box. Timis there with the pivot stripe is standing as we do have Tropical Mechanica run back there by the Canadians made the same charging in on her initial pass trying to fight through Palmer with the offense from inside to out can't leave her open enough space for made the same Chapel whistle. Penalties being issued here. Is Palmer picking up penalty? A multiplayer. Kanichi Wow was the one picked up the multiplayer, so I think they're both maybe picking multiplayers in the pack at the same time. Yep. Lead once more. Tropical Mechanica for and Argentina. And a failure reform as well being picked up. Big penalty trouble here for the Canadians. Not something's happened to us very often. Lavos there taking a penalty as well but being waved back to track she does owe the cheese balls penalty box 30 seconds of her time so Labrosse is going to be sent to the pack of the box now because there is a seat available leaving Hughes as the only jammer available on track yeah Labrosse aware of this does immediately disengage and goes to pay her debt to the penalty box however we did get Palmer and Kanichiwa released simultaneously but Maiden Stain still being battered off at the outside and run back by Argentina Star has come off the helmet of Maiden Sane, passed round this outside edge to the pivot. Pivot being run back now by Argentina. The Maple Leaf firmly on her helmet now. Goes on engagement as Kenichiwa pop again to the outside. Much stronger showing here in Jam 12 of the second half by Argentina, showing in Canada what they can do when they are given the opportunity. Argentina are dominating on lead, but they don't seem to be able to make any headway once they've got lead. It's the Canadian blocking. The Canadian blocking is capturing Argentinian jammers and locking them down. Jam comes to the natural conclusion with 15 points acquired by Argentina, bringing them up to 69. 
and Toucan is 219 as a 150 point differential. I believe that's the highest jam score, single jam score for Argentina so far in the game, 15 yep. points. Previously yep. I think they scored some nines. Yep. And 15 take them well into the highest they've got so far. As I said, showing what they can do when given the opportunity. A little bit of scrappy play there by the Canadians and a busy, busy Canadian side to the cheese ball penalty box really helping them out. But not this time. All four blockers on track and it is a, a Miracle Whips picking up lead jammer and already out onto a scoring pass. So that's broken the streak of Argentina with Miracle Whips getting that lead and now getting the passes. We've got a star stash ratio just gets felled by Monge at the front of the pack. Gotta love Monge there straight away recovering the position in front of the downed jammer and waiting. Miracle Whips caught, uh, forced the call of the jam there with Razio coming hot down that crowd straight. Yeah, a five and a three means an eight point pass, sorry, an eight point jam for Miracle Whips as Meliguana takes the star against 265. Lula Zan, penalty box still empty. The most well behaved, I think I've seen these two teams for a little while. Now you've done it. <laughs> Well, everyone will be queuing up for the box of this right now. So we've got Meli Juana against Lulu Zan. Meli Juana is making the moves first, rounding round Maki Lomera. Got a three wall at the front to beat Maki Lomera, though, still dogging away. Managed to get a hip check in as we have Meli Juana pick up the lead for Canada. Yeah, Argentina made a, a very uh, unfortunate mistake there. Maintaining a bridge out the rear of the pack, even though Palmer was engaging at the front, the bridge could have for Argentina could have moved forward and based out a pack is forward situation. They continued to block, but they did not. They maintained the bridge, unfortunately, causing a no pack call and allowing uh, Meloana out for lead jammer. More penalty trouble for Argentina as we get pop up. Picking up a failure to return, uh, sorry, failure to, yeah, failure to reform penalty in the no pack situation there. We have now a star we have pass. Maki Lamera yep. with the star. Gets on a helmet just before the engagement zone, and I think may have got a point there. Did get a point just off the hips of Palmer at corner four. Snuck in but couldn't get much further. To 2.36, plays 70 two minutes and a lot of change on the clock I want to say 166 points the difference that would be correct Sven go me with that match oh -ho! I'm good at the numbers that's my thing Shania Payne and looks at like Mad Flacker it is it Mad Flacker yep as we get underway, jam 15. As you see at the front, that brace three for Argentina, harassed a little bit by Marge at the beginning, just leaving them open. Allows Shania Payne to bull them out, break them apart, and take the jammer. Alexandra Evans and Bigley Smalls on the run back. No pass, no penalty, so no cut there on Alexandra Evans. Helmet cover goes flying on the impact. Matt Flacker picking that back up, but Shania Payne is scoring freely five in the sky for Canada. We have had the star pass. Yep, Tia Meese once more with yep. the star pass. Definitely, I think this game, whilst you'll see wonderful blocking from both sides a tail of two pivots with Marge and TMS being so impactful for both teams Big and Smalls picks up the clockwise block uh, still might be second in quick possession for Bigley but I will be corrected again if I'm wrong Schneier Payne out scoring again TMS out direction of game point for sorry out Going for a sit down. I did say right before this it was a clean jam, not anymore. Jam called with a minute left on the period clock. 2.48 plays 70. Miracle Whips versus Tropical Mechanica. 
Three on three in the pack as we got this last jam. Yeah, but Bigley Smalls is standing, so Canada will be back at full strength very quickly. And once again, we go to those two brace threes, but Miracle Whip's able to find a gap through, picks up the lead for Canada. Canada now very much in control of this last jam. Hughes with a punishing hit on top of the mechanic and now has the star off looking for the star pass the to pivot. Maki Lomera. But the pivot is trapped way at the front by the opposition pivot, Kenichiwa. And now stuck engaged by the pivot, uh, Kenichiwa and Miracle Whips. Canada keep it great at keeping the pivot and the jammer apart when the star is off the helmet. So I imagine we'll see, are we going to see Miracle Whips carry on running this? The period of clock is now fully run out. And we're getting a fast sprint pack here. And yes, we see Miracle Whips call of the jam. 253 plays 70. 254. Final point being awarded there. So a rough 184 point differential in favor of the Canadians who will go through to a semi-final tomorrow. So we'll have a quick look at some of those jammer points. So we had Falcon Punch, 16 points overall in the game. Shania Punch paid 69 points of those 254 Team Canada belong to her. Melly Juana, who was so jamming a lot in the second period, picked up 31 points in the second period takes 57 in total we had miracle whips again strongest jammer in period two for canada 36 points of their total taking 62 in all and we also had some contribution there from made the same 22 points in the second period 34 in all however looking at argentina's uh, argentina's jammer stats in the second period uh, we had mad flacca scoreless in period two, so eight in total, but it was actually Tropical Mechanica, 29 points, the majority of the points for Argentina come from Tropical Mechanica, 42 yep. in total in the game. No one else really troubled the scoreboard in the second period. No, no. Again, a credit where credit is due, this was not down to any lax jamming by the Argentinians. The Canadian blocking was I believe the children say on point. I think that's the correct way, but they were on fire. Knew exactly where to be, were locking down the Argentinian jammers, not allowing them to play their game. I think we said, or we mentioned a number of times in the game, we had Monge, was great for oh. Canada, but I'd say MVP of the entire game has to be Tay Mies for Argentina. Was Did everything. Doing great as a blocker, doing great as a jammer, take the star pass, and really embodied what we talked about was their MVP. Yep. One of those. It, it, so important for her team there, keeping them in this game all throughout. Um, very important to be covering both sides, both you know, offensively and defensively. Uh, some quick updates I've got for you here. So the loser of this game plays the loser of the USA-Finland game, which I believe is almost certainly Finland at this stage, uh, which means I think then that the, logically the, the winners would play each other. So potentially we could be looking at Canada, USA in the semi-finals. Uh, I'm not sure the exact way the brackets are lining up, but it looks like that way if we're getting the losers going in the, in the uh, that bracket, that section of the bracket. If it's an S, it's an S bracket. So the USA ranking at number second, uh, number two, number second, and the Canada ranking at number three, they would be the logical meeting point at the stage. Which well, should most likely mean the winner of Australia and France plays the winner of England and Sweden, and those respective losers will play each other. That would make the most logical sense, but we will obviously get confirmation this later today for everyone watching at home. Of course, you can find all the updates, the schedule, and the scores available on the Royal Derby World Cup website. Indeed, and up the up to date rankings that will be updated once more tomorrow at the end of this. So that was a great game, and. Oosh. I think, as we said, it was going to be a, a tough game for Argentina, and they just needed to get in harder. What they couldn't do, as they say, break those Canadian defences. Yep. And that is why the 
bulk of those points have gone to Canada. Yeah. Just able to hold the heads. I think we saw too much penalty trouble for Argentina. And unfortunately, just hasn't played out for them today, but definitely improving on their performance of previous. The 2014 result, this was less points conceded for Argentina and more points scored in, the in double game. the time. That's, that's impressive, both because the, the defence of both teams here fully on display. Whilst we do wax lyrical about the Canadian defence, the Argentinians put on a great display themselves, but most of the time they were, were losing too many skaters to the penalty box to be as effective as they could have been. With that lovely analysis from myself, uh, I've been Captain Malice alongside me, the wonderful Sam Will I Be Famous. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>